Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. We have covered an endgame dungeon build a while back, which has received some positive notes from all. So, thank you for watching. With that in mind, I have another build that is more grounded for endgame users, and new users who wish to complete the new dungeon efficiently as possible. With this here, it's going to allow you to have a higher DPS rate with easily sourced weapons on hand, while also being free enough that you can use this in pretty much all dungeons if you like. And all you need to do to master this setup is to have the new Alathinium and a specific grenade launcher of your choice. Let's start with the general aim and the result of the build. Our aim is to showcase a sanguine alchemy effects and provide a build that everyone can pick up and use straight away. For this, we will be using sanguine alchemy and Alathinium. Let's start with exotic armor, sanguine alchemy, with his exotic effect, blood magic. It states, while standing in any riff, a damaging a target will mark it. You deal extra damage to marked targets and gain additional bonus damage with weapons that have a damage type matching your equipped as super. Weapon finder blows while standing in any riff pauses the riff's cooldown, extending its duration. The exotic is now one of the best base exotics to rely on if you want to DPS dump a boss or mini boss in seconds. While having Star Eater's exotic bond is better for overall damage, a Sanguine is near equal in terms of the damage as long as you are matching his elemental request. For us, we are using Needlestorm Super, which is a fast and high impact super, and the Wicked Sister Grenade Launcher with Spike, Field Prep, and Bait and Switch. With these here, and the added 10% buff from Rifts, and then the times 4 Surge buff from our Sanguine, this setup can do hefty amount of damage within a team or on our own. Our second exotic is Alathinium, with his exotic effect, Harvester Spike, which states, This weapon fires a Harvester Spike projectile. A dealing final blows with this weapon creates a single vestige at the target's location. Impaling more powerful combatants with the projectile creates a steady stream of vestiges from the target. And while this may not be the best weapon to use for DPS against bosses, uh, the following is still good because of its ability to apply additional damage and also create ammo when needed. Uh, these two options, plus it being infinite ammo, is what makes it such a powerful but also slept on exotic that many are overlooking. And me adding this to our build allows me to play more aggressive with my heavy of choice since I don't need to worry about ammo not being available. At the same time, this also helps my team with ammo finding in between phases, so it does pay off pretty well overall. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. A feed of void where getting an ability kill will grant you devour. Helion, where using your class ability will summon a solar mortar that will scorch and ignite targets. A fast of hope where having an elemental buff will regenerate class ability over time. A fast of protection where being surrounded by enemies will make you more resistant to incoming attacks. A fast of dominance where your void grenades weaken targets, while your art grenades jolts them. A fast of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy. And a fast of sacrifice where having a arc, solar, or void buff, ability final blows grants you bonus darkness transcendence energy. While Sanguine is best suited with Well of Radiance, this doesn't always need to be the case since we only need to activate our rifts to achieve this buff. For this, having Fast of Hope on hand will be important for generating rift energy and also activating Helion aspect on hand. After this, I will then add the Fast of Protection just for the extra damage reduction and safety when using it freely. We don't have the ability to activate Frost Armor this time round, but this might be something worth adding on to your side depending on your version of this build. After this, this is kind of a toss up for personal things you want, as I chose to have dominance for the jolt effect it provides on my grenades, while balance and sacrifice is there to truly just maintain our abilities from start to finish. It's also important you pick the right super for the build, as this needs to match with your heavier choice to activate the times 4 surge buff you get for free. For me, this feels good enough for the subclass traits to run with currently. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. We also have recovery marked as priority, but this can be adjusted to your liking. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. We have not added any additional damage reduction mods this time, as we plan to maximize how much ammo we can storm for a heavy. However, depending on the activity and encounter you're playing, you may want to remove the strand reserve mod and add on the elemental damage reduction mod for a 15% boost. Like I said, this will depend on the activities and how often you intend to use your heavy a lot. The discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. There is not much required for users to know about the grenade option being picked here, 
as they won't need too much influence of our build. I think on the fast of dominance mod it's helpful when dealing with multiple enemies at once, but outside of that, grenade choice are pretty simple for whatever you have in mind. Now in terms of ability cooldown, we have the following. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer for a 12% mini buff. Bolstering detonation for a 12% class ability buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the ability regen of the build. Additional mods, we have the following. Avoid Siphon for creating all the power via matching elemental type. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon of choice. Avoid Surge mod for a 10% void weapon buff. And powerful attraction, where activating your class ability will automatically collect all the power within your vicinity. So as we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our primary is the Uros Arago AR with Substance and Nutritional Orbs. While many players would prefer to use Lost Signal in their primary slot and then a Rocket Propel Sidearm as their secondary, I have found the following works out well for producing Orbs of Power while also being useful for triggering BNS perk for my Heavy Grenade Launcher. Attrition Orbs does require around half the magazine to trigger it, but this is fine when Substance is added as this will partially reload our weapon and still create all the power as we go along. Now apply this with a Void Cypher mod and you can create multiple orbs of power back to back. This works out really well after doing a DPS phase as you can get your super back up quickly in between the encounters you're based in. For Heavy we then have the Wicked Sister Grenade Launcher with Spike Grenades, Fill Prep and Bait and Switch. The following can be gotten from Zavala's Engrams and I was lucky to get this to drop randomly. While Edge Transit has been the go-to for Heavy for most players, the following is better for those who don't want to run an Onslaught mission and not get the following roll to drop. Both weapons share the same weapon frame type and outside the stats, they are near identical to each other for perk rolls. Further expanding on Sanguine Alchemy newly added buff, this simple and user-friendly build is designed to provide the most efficient method of dealing with bosses and counters and pretty much any other difficulty you have in mind. The items provided are item players can get, and for those who wish to use a more meta-worthy item like Lost Signal or Edge Transit, then the option is still open and available to all. Notice the last dungeon build we did focus on covering as much ground as possible for DPS and survivability, which did do exceedingly well and for a wide number of content. Only problem many have noted was that the exotic class bond was not something that everyone could have access to. After that, the Sanguine Solar build we created focused more on the ad clearing build with a good super uptime that benefited anyone and everything within our rift at the time. With these two builds created and focused on their pros and cons, we created a version that makes full use of the Sanguine stacking buff with our Strangling Lee launcher with bait and switch, increased survivability odds with increased recovery rate and fragment usage, added the Alephinium grenade launcher for faster access to heavy ammo for me and my teammates, and lastly, using a weapon that can create all the power much faster when used against common enemies and thus get our super back up and ready in under a minute. I feel this sort of build should be more common for players who wish to complete Vesper's host and boss without the struggle of needing meta weapons and items on hand. I would hope this build and damage provided is enough to sway players to try out other weapons in game while also pushing themselves to try out more difficult content with a build that sorts their playstyles out. I hope this build and guide has been helpful for you. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos then leave a like and a sub while you are here. A dim link for the builds located below in the pinned section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.